One of our viewers asked this, um, could you do a quick tip about scenes or images which are made up of many smaller shapes of shadow and not in shadow? And then she says, uh, I think she, anyway, yes, uh, she says, I tried applying the loose grid to the tree of Quick Tip 169. And then we get some Quick Tips kind of confused here because the, uh, the, loose, the, the loose grid was Quick Tip 251 called the Big Picture. So you might want to check these out if you haven't already. All right, so anyway, she's, she's using the subject from Quick Tip 169 and she says she got lost. And uh, she got lost because uh, the specifics uh, within the smaller shapes um, kind of confused her as to how to see the larger shapes. So she's asking for help there. How do you see the larger shapes when you have lots of smaller shapes? Okay, this is the subject she's talking about, and it's a good subject for approaching this subject. How do you, approaching this subject, the topic, um, how do you see larger shapes and smaller shapes? Because we all know that if you can see a few large shapes first, and then work your smaller shapes within there, in those, um, you can get better proportion, more life in your subjects, and that sort of thing. So. This has thousands and thousands and thousands of small shapes in it. These tiny, tiny leaves, all the little twigs, little limbs we see popping out there, bits and pieces of sky popping through the tree, and on and on. Well, the problem is, when you're trying to see larger shapes first, the problem is you're probably still calling it tree. Or you might be thinking of all the leaves that are there. If you can switch your attention totally to shape, 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 large shape, and not even think of tree. If you'll do that for all your subjects, you'll be surprised at how much more easily you'll be able to see them. Now let, let's just do a little thing here. There is no correct answer to this. Because this subject, as all subjects can be, uh, divided into several large shapes, but they might be they might be different kinds of shapes. Well, let's just look at how we might solve that problem. Now, if I'm looking at this and I'm squinting helps because because when you squint, it it um, uh, fuzzes out those details so that you can see the larger shapes easier. And most times, it's going to be the light and shadow that's going to help define those shapes. So I can see distinctly. I can see a large shape right here. It has lots of little edges, lots of little in and out edges here. And when we're seeing this large shape, we don't have to distinguish these little bits and pieces of sky that are in it. We don't have to do that. We simplify that as, as simple as we can get it without losing the character of those edges. So we see a large shape right here. And so we can then just start there. So I might do something like this. And I'm going right here. I might do something like that, and I'm just sort of blocking in. Now, if you're uh, using pencil, I'm just using a whiteboard here because this is a really good tool for when you're exploring things like this. You don't need to keep it permanently. So what I'm doing here is, is sort of roughly, roughly gauging what those shapes are and what those edges are of, that, uh, of the outside of that shape. I need to be a little bit more careful there. So we've got this one that protrudes out into the sky there, and then it drops down. We have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a drop in here, so we're just sort of looking at more silhouette of just this shape right here than anything else. And all that does, all this does right here, is to tell me that this is the area in which all this other stuff is taking place. So let's see, as that comes down, it comes down to about right down in here. I could break it up anywhere, but I'll choose to break it up there. And sort of just come right up around there. I could even start back here if I want to. There are no rules about how to do this. It's just a matter of choosing what, uh, of using your observation. So there we could call this, this large shape. Now that's not exactly 
how we would do every single shape, it's the idea of breaking into a large shape. I could have, uh, I could have broken it a different way. I could have gone this way and made two shapes of that. But why make two when I can make one into which we could fit all these little specifics? Now, by doing this one, I've now created the edge for this one because shapes that are uh, shapes that are part of a larger shape are, are going to have, share edges. So when we have one edge, we have the beginning for creating another shape. Now, there's a wonderful concept. So we have this edge right here already. Now let's see what other shape. I can see a large shape right here. So I can go ahead and then do that one using this edge here. Pick it up about right here, maybe about right there, and then just allow my eye. Now I can use the edge of this shape. This shape's in front, this shape's behind. So I could call this two shapes, but why call it two when we can call it one to begin with? So I can use this edge, and then I can allow that edge and come on over like this a little bit. Now I can let that edge merge into this edge, sort of pick that up out here, pull it in over here just a little bit, like that, come back out with the edge. See, I don't need, don't need to get this specific. Right now I'm just uh, laying, you might say laying a, a, a general foundation for how we might do that. And if it were a drawing you're doing, you could use a, um, a very light pencil and just lightly block this in to get it in proportion on your paper before then going in and defining things. So that's what this does. Now where am I? Right here? Alright. So then we'll come out here and we'll just, uh, let's see lots of little ins and outs there. Come right on out here. Then we can go right up there. We don't need to be doing all that for this block in. We just can come up about right in here like that. Uh, we can go in. That's going in on the inside edge here. Comes out sort of like this. Bends around this way. Kind of comes up and then rejoins that shape right there. Now we have two shapes. We could easily now divide the rest of the tree uh, into the, just a third shape, not including the trunk, just a third shape. And so we, could, we have an edge right here that we've begun. So we can pick up on that edge where this edge is about right here. We can pull that edge around kind of follow it all the way down. We actually can do that. I know that you could do this as two shapes or you can do it as one shape. That would be totally what you need to do in order to help you in order to get in, in getting the proportion of this whole thing. Now let's see now this shape kind of comes out like this a little bit, goes in like that and then comes back in here just a little bit like that. And then oh I see we have another right there. This is so blended with there that I didn't see it. So we have another we could do just right in there to, to uh, uh, sort of complete the picture. And from there we could add the trunk, which would be uh, sort of like this. And uh, sort of like that. And we, you know, every tree, if a tree is in direct light, it's going to have cast shadow. You're going to need your cast shadow there. I made that a little bit long. Okay, this is another good reason to use the board is you, you can edit easily. So, do that a little bit differently. Pull that up just a little bit and throw that down like that. Catch the cast shadow about right here because that tells us where the sun is. That's in alignment right in there. That's good. That goes up a hill. That cast shadow catches right here. Goes up a hill like that at that angle. Kind of this angle goes out at a horizontal angle that is another shape and the cast shadow actually um, comes right at the edge of the trunk of the tree kind of comes cut out like this and there we go there's the cast shadow now we have the shapes one two three four five shapes uh, into which now it would be very easy to build in all the specifics here and, and you don't really need to see me do that I would advise that you subdivide rather than go in and try to do little intricate things. I'd advise that you would subdivide each of these shapes in the same way that I subdivided the whole shape, uh, where you would come in and, and I think start now, at this point, you would start with what's in shadow and what's not in shadow. Now you see this whole area right here is in shadow, and so you might even just make little 
little diagonal lines to indicate what's in shadow to get started and go on and on and so I would continue like that vertical lines to show what's in shadow now and, and so and I think it will be less confusing when if you're doing uh, this sort of thing if you use vertical lines that all move in the same direction the trunks in shadow the cast shadows there this is called a form shadow then we would continue that I don't think you need to see me do that everybody wants to see me finish a piece well <laughs> That's not going to happen in these quick tips. So, I hope this is far enough now uh, and shows you how that you can give clarity to your work. You can get it in a really good proportion. If you can learn to just see, just observe, and think shape, the lar and, and do this in as few shapes as you can uh, for a large subject like this, the largest shapes you can put down first, and then you build those smaller shapes within the larger shapes. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.